I want to do an updated talk on what P2P open corporations or what Ethereum calls distributive autonomous organizations. An idea I shared in 2011 with one of the founders of Ethereum. Now, what are peer-to-peer -peer open corporations? Well, those are what found-ups become. Now, most found-ups are not going to become peer-to-peer -peer open corporations. What they're going to be is just independently owned small businesses that will basically provide an income for you and your family. There's no reason for you to become a peer-to-peer -peer autonomous you know, organization um, because all you're doing is providing whether vegetables or food locally. Now, some entities will level up and actually will become maybe a Whole Food, maybe um, an eBay, or maybe like a Craigslist or something decentralized, and they will need to have an organization structure. Now, understand what a peer-to-peer -peer open corporation is. is It's a specific kind of organization that has a specific articles. So let me go through them um, to highlight. Foundups Corporation, for example, is a peer-to-peer -peer open corporation. There can be no more than um, 10,000 shares issued to any one person. No one, not even the founder, can own more than 10,000 shares. All shares are voting, which means if you actually um, have shares, you can vote. There's no such thing as non-voting shares as there is in the current corporate model. Now, for the first 10 million shares to launch the found up, those shares are non-dilutable. What does that mean? It means every time we issue more shares, because every found up is going to have 20 million shares issued at some point, um, ultimately what it means is the first 10 million shares are there for what we call the seed innovators, the ones that help get the organization going, the thousand, the first thousand. So the first thousand patrons on foundups.com are actually going to get equity in Foundups Corp. Now, we've got some restrictions and everything else because of the SEC, so we're waiting for the SEC to basically clear up. But what I can do right now as an, as an individual, I can gift you my personal equity in Foundups to you. So the corporation isn't doing it, I'm doing it. What are other important aspects of a P2P open corporation? These are things that you're going to really appreciate. Number one is they're not allowed to participate in any lobbying or any political campaigning. Imagine a world where corporations are not basically hijacking our government, where corporations are not spending billions of dollars on lobbyists in order to push legislation through. In the future, every corporation is going to be a peer-to-peer -peer open corporation. And I can explain how that's going to happen. Once people see FoundUps Corp, once people understand that corporations should not be involved in politics, corporations should not be involved in lobbying, they will demand that other corporations become peer-to-peer -peer open corporations. People will boycott products. People will insist and these corporations will ultimately die without their customer support. Now, some other important functions of a peer-to-peer -peer corporations is this, is that the directors or board cannot change the articles of incorporation without the approval of the greater stakeholders. Anyone who buys a product, anyone who's influenced or affected by a peer-to-peer -peer open corporation is a greater stakeholder. Whether they buy the product or not, if the corporation exists within their sphere, let's say you live in um, Seattle and, and Microsoft's headquarters is in Seattle, guess what? You are, by default, a greater stakeholder. Imagine if you bought Windows or if you bought a product. Or imagine that every Coca-Cola you bought, you actually got shares in Coca-Cola. Well, guess what? With an with peer-to-peer -peer open corporations, anytime you purchase a product, 
you will get shares. Now understand, there is a cap. Remember, no one can own more than 10,000 shares. As these shares run out, more shares are issued. That is how we maintain what is called the dilution. Now, obviously, if you are an early investor, every time we issue more shares, guess what? Your initial shares increase. And let me use an example. Let's imagine Google was a peer-to-peer -peer open corporation. And in 1996, they issued 20 million shares, like FoundUps has issued right now, 20 million shares. And you purchased just, put $1 into Google and had just 100 shares. Right now, if you put a dollar per month into FoundUps, you get a 100 shares per month issued as a warrant from me to you. The warrant activates the moment we do an IPO or we sell the company. So, Imagine you had those 100 shares of Google. Now, Google now has 600 million shares. That's 30 dilutions. 20 million times 30 is what? 600 million shares. So your 100 shares became 3,000 shares over the course of the years and the dilution. And ultimately, today, your 3,000 shares would be worth $1.65 million. Now, there's also a very, another very important aspect of peer-to-peer -peer open corporations. It's this, that 80% of any capital gains must be redirected into launching more found-ups. It can be redirected to launching, it can be redirected to scaling up your found-ups, your existing found-ups. So, so let's say you're in business, all of a sudden you've got an influx of $1.32 million, that would be 80% of 1.6, that you could use to invest in your own found-ups and launching your own found-ups and scaling up your own found-ups and finally in supporting other found-ups. Now, how much each of those areas that you put in is going to be determined by something called a contract and that's where Ethereum comes in. You see, in the future, you won't need board of directors, you won't need governors, because everything is going to be autonomously driven by distributive autonomous organizations. That's the beauty of Ethereum. See, Ethereum is something that I shared with them in 2011 called the Open Innovation Framework. Now, they've added some clever ideas on top of my original idea, and they've improved on it. For example, um, I had talked about making OIF open source, but I didn't know how to make it open source. They figured out a way. I also didn't know how to plug the, um, uh, what I was doing into Bitcoin 2.0 and blockchains. So all of these things have happened. It doesn't matter because ultimately what it means is we can now launch the kind of corporations that the world needs in order to bring about something called an empathic civilization. And if we're going to save the world, we better launch peer-to-peer -peer open corporations. And here's why. What happens all of a sudden when corporations no longer hijack politics? We get politics back. What happens when corporations can no longer invest in political campaigns? We get presidents back. So support me and my vision in launching thousands of peer-to-peer -peer, um, open corporations on a platform called Ethereum Play Foundups app. It's imagine having fun saving the planet and doing it together. And some of those ideas will level up and become these peer-to-peer -peer corporations that will have millions, maybe even billions of dollars. And remember, 80% of that money must be redirected in launching more Foundups. And here's where it gets exciting. It's not the founder who gets the 80% and decides as a gatekeeper where he's going to put the money. No. Those thousand individuals that help launch that found up all share in the net profits. When they cash out, however, 80% of their capital gains must be reinvested into launching, supporting, or scaling up more found ups. I have a complete idea on how to save the planet. What I lack is capital. Not a lot of capital. I just need a dollar per month from you. That's right. A dollar per month will allow me to code out, to hire developers, to travel around, and ultimately share the vision of FoundUps. 
My name is Michael Trout, asking you to help me save the world together with Found Ups.